So at least by the numbers, it seems variations are kind of useless. Okay, well, that's not really the full story, but welcome back to the channel. This time, looking at PC stats, I looked at the first 12 and the last 12 games uh, of the Junior Man's World Cup that went by in December, and there were some cool takeaways to look at. The concept of this video was inspired by a university assignment I had on sports stats, and basically we had to do a probability study uh, for the PC outcomes over an indoor tournament weekend for my home club, Toronto Titans. What we essentially did was we made this outcome tree um, and you had a yes or no of whether or not the action took place and by that logic, the more steps that you add, the higher the chance of failure because that's an extra opportunity for something to go wrong. And someday in the future I'll have better equipment, better cinematography, but just to keep it simple for this time, so if you take something really simple like the direct route one, you have inject, yes or no, stop, yes or no, shot, yes or no, goal, yes or no, very simple. Now again, if you go with a variation and you make your probability tree, there's much more steps involved. It's a very rudimentary visual, but if, if you think about having multiple castles or rearranging your formation right at the last second, uh, if you do uh, a fake shot but spin around to, to pass, uh, the second castle moves to stick stop somewhere else, uh, somebody else has to shoot, somebody does a backflip, dives in for a diving deflection. A bit exaggerated there, but you get the idea, right? There's so much more going on, so many places where that could have an error and then there goes your PC. And when I look at the numbers, it did show that. Uh, looking at positive outcomes, whether that was a PC earn, a stroke, or a goal from penalty corners. I strip it back even further to just goals and, and strokes, and then you had 25% success on direct flicks, and then 9% success on variations. In fact, out of this sample, the Aussies were the only ones to score on variations. Uh, they got two. So at least by the numbers, it seems variations are kind of useless. Okay, well, that's not really the full story, but at least from this sample, it shows that they may not bag us that many goals. But does that mean that we just scrap them entirely and we just go direct route one every time? Well, no, of course not. Because then, you know, the defense can just park two people on the post and have the other two run one every single time we need to add some unpredictability so that our opponent doesn't know 100% what we're going to do. As well, when you have these more complex patterns and there's more things going on all around, um, that's more information for the defense or goalkeeper to process. Uh, and then when you have more information being processed from different places, that slows down your reaction time and that makes it more difficult. I know this may be a very simplistic way to look at things, I haven't even considered uh, the relative skill of the players, whether you have somebody who's really good at flicking or you have a couple of people that are good with their hand-eye and timing and are really good at deflections. But if we just suspend our disbelief on that for a second and just go on the premise that a direct shot will be easier to pull off, irrespective of the players we have on our team who maybe have the special skills that we need to do these more complex variations, the benefit of using them may not necessarily be in scoring goals itself, but rather just adding that unpredictability and confusing our opponents. Would that mean strategy-wise, it would make more sense at the start of a match or a tournament to use more of our variations? And then right from the jump, we're basically flexing our muscles and adding that mental and psychological stress onto our opponent. They have to then always be aware of what special routines or variations that we're capable of. And then in the later stages of, a, of the tournament, when our back is potentially up against the wall, we're on the brink of elimination, we desperately need a goal, that's when we go back to all reliable drag flick. In fact, I separated the earlier and the later games and it seems that the teams are actually doing the opposite, but in fairness, we're creating an even smaller sample size now. It would be best if I had the whole tournament, uh, the data for the whole tournament, but fuck's sakes, even this little sample that I did now took so long, uh, so we'll just call this one a pilot study and maybe next time we can 
um, get a bigger set of data. But am I onto something? Are any of these points worth considering in PC strategy? Is the simple drag flick the best PC routine? Let me know what you think. As always, leave a comment for some feedback, like if you liked it, share if you think somebody else might too, and subscribe so you're in the loop for more hockey stuff and whatever I come up with next. See ya.